Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be continuing right where we left off with the Suzy and Open VM look. Um, so this is part two, and in this we're going to be taking a look at how to take snapshots of your machine, um, how to use seamless mode, how to install things, <clears throat> basic management, a couple of other bits and pieces that really should have been in the last video, but I just kind of thought that we'd already seen everything. I wanted to make this video a lot more technical, if I'm totally honest. I wanted to be dealing with actually installing things via command line in a very, I just want to show you the video as I'm frozen, in a very in-depth way and actually starting a VM from very scratch because I want to get you guys on to the same page of virtualization. But I kind of changed my mind on this video because I figured, you know what? It's great to go through that, but I believe in solid foundations first, and it could be a lot of headache if you don't know how to take clones of machines, what basic configuration is, and stuff like that, and I'm just using Suzy, because I would like to get on with CentOS, um, which is basically a uh, cut, I don't want to use the word cut-down version of um Red Hat, but it's a slightly, yeah, I suppose you could say it's cut down less supported version of Red Hat. And I would like to use that because then I can show you guys how to do everything from scratch. But I figure that's not really the best way to start. Um, as I just want to show you guys the basics first. So I'm going to assume that you're following right along with me. So, in other words, that you'd created the virtual machine previously. Um, and I don't remember what version of Suzy we're using, if I'm totally honest, which is really crappy of me. Uh, let's see if I can find it under details. Uh, we'll find it in a second, anyway, when we're uh, creating a snapshot. It's 13 point something, which is really bad, but I completely forgot to take a note of it before we get onto the video, if I'm totally honest. So yeah, I'm uh, super prepared for this one, as one can see. So, there's a couple of points. Um, in school, install guest editions is like insert the CD. Now, with the version of Suzu that we're already running, this isn't like we're using CentOS or something like that where this would actually be handy. Um, with this, it's already pretty much pre done. So, if you've not already got it, this is how you do it. Um, and then you'd basically just install it as is. But for us, for this version, it's not necessary. I'm probably going to cover out how to do this in a different um, setting. Because it can be a bit tricky with certain distros of Linux. Um, and also I want to start going to virtualization of Windows as well. Because it can actually have some uses as it turns out. Anyway, I digress. So let's show you guys how to take snapshots. So screenshots, but we want the snapshots, which is host and T. Host, by the way, would be control. So if you do need to take, um, say, a snapshot, just make sure it's the right control key. Not the left. That won't do you any good. It's the right control. So anyway, I'm going to just click on snapshot. And I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, it could be anything we want. So yeah, let's say... And then under the description, and which pretty much goes into telling you guys what you want to do. So if you're doing something really big, and six months down the line, you think you're going to want to come back to the state, or let's say you're doing multiple uh, different configurations, this is what you want. Uh, snapshots can be really handy if you're uninstalling, reinstalling things, if you're trying to configure something, if a package is just conflicting with another one, if it, it just is one of those days where everything is trying to piss you off, then a snapshot's pretty good. So you just click on OK and it will um, well and create a snapshot for you. So not anything particularly complicated. I'll show you how to restore one as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to power off the machine. You can actually restore the current session as well, if you'd so wish. But I'm just going to choose no and do things the old-fashioned way. And hopefully enough, my virtual box is minimized. There we go. So anyway, uh, there's something else I'd like to show you before I show you restoring sessions, because this is also kind of helpful cloning. I'm not going to go into the full 
thing of this, I'm not going to go through the whole process because it takes a while to clone depending on your hard drive setup and because I'm recording simultaneously. And also I don't think you want to wait like 10 minutes or whatever it's going to take to clone. I depends on the hard drive size. Probably wouldn't take that long because it's a pretty small file I'm using. But hard drive rather, VDI. But uh, anyway, if you click on clone, you can call this anything you want. There's purposes behind this. Let's say, for example, I'd set up an operating system. It doesn't matter what it is, but let's just assume it was Linux A. Um, you know, that's the cool operating system name. And let's say that I had a couple of designs for Linux A. One would be, say, a web server and... Um, basically testing HTTPD, maybe another one is like a file server type of thing, and possibly another one is maybe testing applications, but I don't want them all to run, so for example, let's say I'm running a uh, test machine for applications, I might not want that at the same time as, say, a file server, or I might want one machine which has got like a proper desktop and stuff on it, so it actually has a GUI, while another one might just be very basic it might just have like uh might all just be like terminal with say oh i don't know like httpd installed so you could do that so you wouldn't have to install the thing twice you just clone it so for example in this case i'd just be like yeah um suzy httpd right just just assume that that's what i wanted to do and then i'd click uh next and uh you do like a full clone and then you click next and I'm not going to do that because otherwise it's going to start whirling but all you do is click on full clone and just click next a couple of times and Bob, should, Bob would be your uncle, it's not particularly difficult um, as I said there's multiple reasons behind that, let's say for example you installed bare bones terminal only system say 10 to 6.4 or 5 and then halfway through you were like okay I want to go two different directions then typically cloning is really handy for that anyway, uh, screenshots uh, snapshots so we've got our snapshot there and if you click above it you can kind of see that this is the current state but if you want to wheel back one you could be like okay well we can restore it which is that you can delete it or you can show the details so if you do that you could see all of the details of the shyness that we've got including you know um, what operating system so what a uh, Images were installed at the time and all the other bits and bobs and the time it was taken and the dates and all of that crap But that's certainly not helpful to us because we don't care We're just going to click on start again because you know, that's how we roll and so I'm just gonna uh, Oh, uh, there you go. I knew it was 13 point something um, I'm amazing. My memory is like I'm not an elephant or something So anywho, uh, I'm just gonna Mince more water and be incredibly rude I think I've explained most of the stuff that I wanted to now. There's a few other things that are kind of cool. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, you can't do much about the loading times, unfortunately. That's why I'd recommend, if possible, to... Uh, to basically have your images on a separate drive and make sure you're allocating them sufficient amounts of memories. You don't want them to be running out of RAMs, and obviously you don't want your host operating system to be running out of RAMs, especially if you're doing, I uh, don't know, I keep using web design because that's what I do a lot, but let's assume it was not web design, let's say it's programming or, you know, even basic stuff. Um, so let's assume that you would like to, say, do activities. I don't know what it is with this whole kind of glitchy thing. Sometimes it works properly, sometimes it doesn't. I think it's got something to do with the um, drivers and stuff I'm using for the system I've kind of have to sort that out at some point but it's out the scope of this video so I just click, click on uh, fire my fox and there's actually a couple of really nice things you can do with this so obviously we've got full internet right uh, let's say for example google.com yeah okay I thought it's going to prove me a liar there and let's say we wanted to I don't know search for there you go so we can go here and go to the website I'm not going to bother to do all that so anyway um you know, we could do whatever we'd like. So, let's say, for example, we wanted to, I don't know, uh, go to a certain website or whatever. You know, we're just browsing. Now, what you can do is you could do that in virtual machines. So, let's assume we had an, an application that's only available in 
let's assume it's only available on a particular version of Windows or it's only available on say Linux or you might want to just separate it because you don't trust it that much you want to put it on a different virtual machine and just see how it handles is really good if you're creating your own applications or if you're testing applications or whatever you know there's, there's different reasons behind this and I'm not going to go into all of the possibles but um let's assume that that's what you wanted let's say you wanted a fairly insular system and you just wanted to do that because what you can do you could you could browse like this you know there's no there's no one saying well you can't browse like this and you know just minimize but it's you know I mean for example you could be like yeah okay maximize it and all that jazz but it's not it's not really the best way to do it so you, what you can do you can just click on seamless mode which is host and L once again host and L is the right control if you're using standard keyboard and uh, this British keyboard I think is right and I think American keyboard is also right and so it's host and L now you're gonna see this warning um, because basically what's going to happen is most of this stuff is going to disappear. Uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, that's fine. Okay, switch. I'm going to leave the warning here, though, in case, just if, in case we want to see it again. So if you click on that... Oh, what happened? Ah, interesting. All right? Pretty awesome. It's basically very much like a standard web browser. So you can do anything you like with this. You can maximize it, you can minimize it, but you basically can't see anything else. I want to emphasize that. So you can't do anything. Now the web browser is still functional. So for example, it's still, and I, yeah, I, I realize I missed the apostrophe there. I, I kind of noticed it as I was typing it. I was like, I can't bother to go back. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's still fully functional, but if you want to, you can press like, uh, I think it's right, home, and that'll bring you up this menu, basically based on where your mouse pointer is, so let's say it was there, it'll uh, pop up, okay, I thought it was based on the mouse pointer, oh, apparently I'm completely and utterly wrong and I spout rubbish, but regardless, you get the idea and you can see all the shiners again, so you could, for example, go back to the virtual screen, or you could just press um, right and L, and that will switch you back to ye old standard view. So that could be kind of handy if, as I said, you've got like an old version of a program or something else, and you just want to uh, use that instantly. And I just want to show you one last thing. I probably should have put it in the previous video, but I didn't. So I'll just show you that now. Um, I've showed you how to restore sessions, I've showed you everything else, I've showed you how to do seamless mode, I've showed you about installing desk, um, guest editions. So what I am going to show you finally is basically the GNOME terminal. Um, this is kind of like a complicated one and I'm not going to show you all of it, but let's assume, now you have to do stuff under sudo because basically with SUSE you with a lot of them, like say CentOS, you'd use um, uh, say yum, right? Which is basically a package manager. So, for example, it would be like yum install blah, right? With Suzy, it's not. It's that. So it's just zipper. But watch what happens if I press that. Yeah, it's gonna say yeah. You you don't really you're not you need to be root bro. So you could do this a couple of ways. You can type in like sudo. And then the command, which would be not Zupa. Oh God! There we go. You could do it like that, or you could just make yourself sudo and elevate yourself for this terminal window. So what you do with that is you just put sudo um, space minus symbol i or uh, dash i or whatever you want to say, and that'll be like, yeah, okay, what's the password? Uh, in this case, blah. You all know what the password is anyway from the previous one, but. Eh. And then it's like, okay, so now now I am root. So now I actually have permission to do things. And there's a couple of little notes I want to show you. There's um, install HTTPD, right? So it will be like, okay, uh, dependencies. Now if we choose N, because I don't want to actually install for a second, we can also be like sudo um, install, and then you could be like Y. So basically you're adding an argument. So this is basically saying, yes, I definitely know that I want to install this. I don't need you to tell me or ask me any further questions. All right? I understand what I'm doing. 
in this case I understand what I'm doing it's fine and then you just basically type that and in this case it's gonna be like okay uh, okay I probably actually have to add the bloody package name apparently I'm trying to say install install which is not really gonna work for us it's just pretty crap of me there we go so it's gonna whirl through various things as it's uh, installing shyness and you could actually use this to update as well um, so for example it would be like uh, zipper uh, and actually you can also oh by the way I also forgot you can use up and down arrow keys to go to cycle through commands which is kind of handy if you're speaking absolute directories so you could be like I don't know uh, I think this works update yeah so you can tell it to update and all the other bits and pieces and remove would also do the same thing but I'm just going to tell it to exit out because yeah fine close because we don't need to see that I think you got the idea so oh and also I probably should show you one last one uh, just because I probably have to make myself pseudo again yes 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 yes, yes. Uh, a zipper remove HTTPD and it'll be like yeah and ask so you can also remove packages like that and it'll go through the whole thing but I don't think you need to see the basics anyway I think that's just about it in this video so I've taken you now through the very basics of this I might cover basically sharing clipboards and stuff um and actually now I've got like configured by default I can't actually remember if I did that off camera because it's been a while since I've actually had this machine created. Alright, let's uh, see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, shared. Uh, bidirectional. Drag and drop. Bidirectional. Yep, yeah, bidirectional. I think I've got like a noty paddy thing. Actually, to be fair, I could just do that. So, what we can do is just like, okay, cut. Yeah, okay, that does work anyway. So, that's how you. Um, share clipboard which can be kind of handy uh particularly is F uh, i cannot speak suddenly particularly if i as i said regarding um the view so for example let's say i had seamless mode once again uh say seamless mode uh, yes yeah, i could have just bloody press uh right uh control l but whatever and let's say for example i wanted to oh i can't think of an example let's say I wanted that and I want to copy the notepad then it could be kind of handy like that you know so you've got that you've got a lot of flexibility which is kind of handy it's really good if you're using databases and that type of thing and I think that just about covers it so this is going to be like the last simple video the next ones are going to be getting a lot more complicated and hopefully the next couple we're going to basically be able to set up all our web servers and some security and i'll show you how to actually manage your package packages properly it's basically going to be a lot more complicated than this because we're not going to be using uh, guis we're going to be basically doing a lot of command line stuff so it shall be the funsies so once again i just want to reiterate if you're stuck in this and you're like ah what can i do you just write control and press l and it will switch you back just want just remember right Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.